Hey, hey, hump day, Wednesday, all day long, all day, all night. I uh, hope everybody is rocking and rolling through this week. Welcome to another episode of the Chad Prather Show. It's party time, Mom. Uh, yeah, we're in the Mothership, which is Studio 22. Kayla and Chris are driving us into the nether regions of all things insanity. Uh, Chad Prather Unapologetic is what you need to be following on Facebook. ChadPrather.com is where you need to be reading uh, my thoughts on current issues, and of course, uh, chatonblaze.com. It's where you need to be buying some t-shirts. Uh, good stuff, good stuff. Uh, let's get into it. Listen up, my little brain farts. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm starting to see an interesting trend that's bothering me, all right? Uh, occasionally, it happens throughout history that we get a sociological and psychological glimpse into human nature that should quite literally scare the crap out of us. We all know, at least theoretically, people are mean to each other. I mean, people suck. Uh, 30 minutes after church on Sunday morning, you're already cussing out the 18-year-old ponytailed waitress at the local fried chicken restaurant and gleefully getting off on your overwhelming sense of superiority. That kind of thing. But man's inhumanity to man has defined the events of human history since Cain murdered his brother Abel with a rock. We know that people strive to be superior to their others and that domination of those perceived unlike yourself can be a temptation for some that is just too big to look away from. The fact that history, uh, the fact of history is that people really screw each other over. We love to bite the outreach, outreached hand. We really do. People love to have an enemy, and they really love being able to have a common enemy so that their little covetous community can find a cohesive reason to band together in unity. It's like Mean Girls join, join the Homeowners Association. Look, folks, take a look at the uh, 21st century Western civilization with a specific focus on modern-day America. We've lived a very comfortable life. Our comfort has lulled us into a sense of security that is absolutely deadly. We think that stuff just shows up for our consumption and people are, are nothing more than vessels to be used. Very few of us know what it is. It's like to have an empty shell for a starving belly. Most of us do not live subject to the outdoor elements or the brutal environment. We're not forced to walk around naked or seek our medical solutions from the village shaman. Capitalism, free market economy, and our marked sense of liberty has created a world in which we have lived entitled. So, yes, folks, we are the Kardashians of the planet. we found creative ways to flourish, but we do not operate with any level of mental toughness or complexity of thought. In our comfort, we've become quite simple, but we have also apparently become quite mean. It's amazing to me that we are now flippantly reverting to the rhetoric of the 1930s Germany or even segregation voc vocabulary of 1950s America. We obviously have failed to learn from history, and we hate our teachers. Maybe if we would have spent more time learning from monuments of history rather than tearing them down, we'd be further along. Our coddled brains just couldn't handle the brutal realities of history, so we banned them rather than learn from them. We're actually entertaining the idea of repeating some of the most vile examples of history's inhumanity. Actions usually follow the words because the words provide the justification. We Americans are, quite honestly, spoiled rotten. Most people would never survive if they had to fend for themselves against the wild or even if they had to slaughter, butcher, or grow their own food. They would starve to death. But in the relative safety and security of their cloistered sociological basement mentality, they're now lashing out at anyone that is perceived as a threat to their comfortable way of life. And believe it or not, some of the people you hate the most are actually people you're going to need. I mean, just this morning, I had somebody tell me that those of us with a conservative mindset, we're the ones that live in fear and we prove it by our need to own so many guns. Guns. Well, listen, sister, when the trains start rolling and the shit gets real, don't come knocking on my log cabin in the woods. But I get it. You don't like what you don't understand, and you certainly don't want to hear from it. When a voice such as mine pierces your comfort zone telling you that things are wrong, it's your reaction to throw water on the fire alarm rather than the fire itself. The shrill warnings are an affront to their cozy mental conditions, and how dare someone warn them that their path and way of thinking may be leading them to destruction. The messenger becomes the enemy. The teacher becomes the transgressor. Nowhere in history do you find people that have been great and strong after having this type of deep cultural laziness. Celebrities tell us what to wear and how to think. Mainstream media tells us what to believe. There's no real sources of actual news anymore. We've become bullies. No one is safe from the elitist let them eat cake mentality. That's why the modus operandi du jour is to label, classify, marginalize, disenfranchise, delete, deplatform, demonetize, critique, criticize, cancel, and ultimately kill if that which you disagree with gets too unruly and becomes a threat to the way of life that you had nothing to do in creating. 
So be careful which hands you bite and reel in your deep desire to bully others around you because when you are on the receiving end one day, and trust me, you will one day be on the receiving end, you may just need the hand you bit to come and bail you out. So let's try to be nice. And the thing that's prompting me to say those things, Chris, is I'm watching these people from their places of superiority and elite mindset because they somehow agree with the, quote, science, or they agree, agree with the scholarly study or the, the media stuff. You know, everybody wanted to come at me the other day for talking about Joy Reid. Well, Joy Reid graduated from Harvard. I don't care if she graduated from the Institute of Jesus Christ with a Ph.D., you start talking about putting me in a classification and ultimately a camp and marginalizing me and separating me from the rest of society, yeah, that's a bully mentality. That is an elitist mentality. That is looking down on everybody else because just the, the norms of the day and the mainstream happens to be going your direction. And so you're going to pat yourself on the back looking down on everybody else and calling heretics of anybody that may not agree with you or even dares call something out or questions the authority. And that's where we're at, folks, <clears throat> and I've seen it. I've seen these teachers that have become bullies to their students. We've shown you the TikTok videos on here. You know, people, who, you know, you're going to get misgendered or mispronounced or whatever, and they're demanding that these kids call them by the right thing. That's a bully mentality. These people who are shoving these tests up their kids' nose. I saw a video the other day. David Harris shared it. They showed a video the other day of a woman who was testing her kid for COVID, and she shoved the swab way up his nose. That's not comfortable, first of all, and just left it there. Just held his head and made him keep it in there. That's not how the test works. That's a bully mentality. That's somebody saying, I've got power over you. Even if it's your kid, I'm going to make you do this. I'm going to make you mask. I'm going to make you quarantine. I'm going to set you apart. That is a bully mentality. I'm telling you, it's just another sign of man's inhumanity to man. This is the kind of stuff we're dealing with. And you think, oh, well, you know, you, you crazy guys out there, you crazy wild-eyed conservatives over there, y'all over there think y'all blah, blah, blah. You know, I put the shirt out. It says freedom over fear. Had nothing to do politically with anything. It just said I, the toxicity of fear is killing people. It keeps you, stops you, it slows you in your tracks. I put it out there. Facebook wouldn't run an ad for the freedom over fear campaign because they said, well, it's a political issue. How is that a political issue? It's not a political issue. And so then I, I, they, I finally convinced them to run the ad. And then here come the trolls. I started to take a segment today, Chris, and just read some of the comments of these wild leftist progressives who were hating on this shirt. It's just a fucking shirt, man. It's a T-shirt with words on it. That's it. All right. No, nobody, nobody's trying to make you eat the thing. You don't have to buy it. Believe it or not, your participation is voluntary. It's just a T-shirt. If you want to buy it, that's why they call it a free market. And all I'm saying is the message. You don't let the toxicity of fear. Well, fear is a good thing. If you're too stupid to realize that, that there's some things you should be afraid of, and that's what keeps us alive. No, that's common sense. That's discernment. I'm talking about toxic fear. I'm talking about things that paralyze people. You know, the kind of thing that makes a woman put her kid in the trunk in order to go to a testing facility. That, that kind of thing. That's fear. The thing that makes you mask up three times before you go see grandma because, you know, you're scared to death that, you know, you're going to catch something from her. Don't even, don't even kid yourself. You're not worried about protecting grandma. You're scared about yourself. That's the whole thing that this is about. So we've got a whole culture that's built on fear. And the reason you're so full of fear is because, <laughs> is because you don't have any sense of eternity in your heart. I'm, come on. I, I, listen, I got notes right here. I've been making notes. I'm going to do, do a thing on here at some point in time. People, they're not living beyond anything but this little 75 years on this little blue planet. And that's it. That's the only hope you got. And that's why you're living in fear. Uh, you, you're so willing to protect what you know because you don't understand the mystery of the unknown. And you're not willing to embrace any of that stuff that you're living in fear. So that's the message I've been trying to get across. But no, the bullies out there, they want you living in fear. They, they want you downtrodden. And they're ultimately, the reason they want you that way is they want you to come groveling to them and begging for them. Why don't you just take your vaccine? Why don't you just mind your own damn business? Because I, I don't have to come groveling to you. 
this thing would be dead. It would be over with. See, I've had so many people said this to me in the last couple of days. This whole thing, coronavirus would be over with if everybody would just get vaccinated. No, it wouldn't. You know it wouldn't. You know good and well that it would not. That's the whole point. You guys are getting, you guys are getting vaccinated. And, uh, and y'all are the ones that are sick. So anyway, you better, you better get your stuff together and understand we're in this thing globally together as a global community. Um, inflation in the United States currently at 7%, climbing. It ain't even looking back. I mean, it's blowing past. Uh, American companies are only expected to increase wages by half that rate. So you're going to be broke. We're all about to be broke. Uh, the inflation going up past 7%. They're not going to increase. You know, they used to give you a raise based on inflation every year. They used, they, they used to give you a raise every year and say, you know, it's kind of cost of living raise. Now we'll give you 2%, whatever. And they can't do that anymore, man. Uh, American employers expect to increase pay by 3.4% in 2022. Um, yeah, well, we in trouble, folks. So, so this whole thing, we're about to be in the same boat together. You know, the shelves are empty. I see the shelves. I see the videos of it. I see the pictures. Um, I went in. I went the other day. I went into my uh, one of my storage places, and I pointed out to somebody that I care about. I wanted them to know. I said, you know, if something happens to me, you need to know my Patriot Supply is in here. This is where a lot of stuff is stored. Um, so... <laughs> <laughs> Which is very, is very interesting, Chad, because the people that were prepping, you know, the preppers are the ones that need to go out there and not be bully yeah. and say, hey, let, and I feel like if we hit that point where we have empty shelves, all you preppers out there better have the heart of giving and grace and help each other out. And that's very altruistic of you, Chris. Grace and giving. Well, I tell you what, I'm going to be the king monkey on the shit hill, that's for sure. <laughs> I, let, let me tell you something. Uh, I'm going to be the chief baboon because I got the bullets and the food. And I can live in the dark. I know how to build a fire. Um, you got oil prices that are going to get $100 a barrel in 2022. It's going to go higher than $100 a barrel. Oh, yeah. It's going to go higher than that. So funny to me. I got a lot of friends in the oil and gas industry here in Texas, and, and every one of them will tell you they vote conservative, but they make their money when a Democrat's in office. That's crazy how that works, but it's true. Um, yep. Uh, the, uh, is what's going to happen? We're in trouble. Uh, Glenn's been saying it. I, you know, I tune into Glenn. I listen to Glenn. I'm traveling all the time, and usually in the mornings I'm in the truck, and I'm tuned into Glenn, and I'm listening. And, and you know, I like to pick on Glenn. I give him a hard time, like, it doesn't, you know, because just I love Glenn and I appreciate Glenn. I love Glenn's message. And that book, The Great Reset, his new book, you can't even get it right now. You can't get it because of supply chain issues. They don't have the paper to print it on and put it together and ship it out. They can't get it out. So you got to buy it on the Kindle version or the digital version, your books on a iPad or whatever it may be. Um, and I hate that. I like real books. And, um, one of the guys, we've got uh, Jeff Rosenblum is going to be on the show here in a little while. Uh, he's got a new book out called Exponential, talking about how to do business, how to advertise and, and how to partner and grow your business exponentially. It's an incredible new book. And, and I, I want people to come on like Jeff to explain to you in these difficult times of inflation, of the political bullying, of the silencing of conservatives and the censorship – and just know there's still ways for you to go out there and succeed and profit uh, in this world we're living in. I've said from the very beginning, when everything started shutting down, I said, now is the time for many of you. You could take over the world if you want to, because nobody wants to go to work. Every, the government wants to keep you down. That's why they want to give you $15 minimum wage. They want to pay for your college. You know, they want to give you all of these subsidies. They want to bail you out. They want to prop you up. They want to keep you on the tit. They want to do all these things. And now they want to send you stimulus money to keep you at home. They want you marginalized to nothingness. Um, and that's, that's a reality of what we're dealing with. But, you know, you bring Jeff on, and he writes book about the, books about this, about how you can succeed and how you can profit and go out and do business in this world today. This is still the greatest opportunity ever in the history of the planet to go out there and be successful. 
Um, hey, if the last two years have taught us anything, it's that you got to take control of your own health. It's up to you. Uh, nobody's going to take care of you, folks. It's up to you. It's clear that you can't simply rely on the government or Big Pharma to protect you or your family. That's where the Z-Stack comes in. Z-Stack is a specifically, specially formulated immune-boosting supplement that includes zinc, quercetin, vitamin C, vitamin D. It's beautiful because I take that stuff every day anyway. Now this makes it easier. Formulated by Dr. Vladimir Zelenko, the world-renowned doctor that President Trump credited with his early successful treatment of protocol, uh, treatment protocol and his decision to take hydroxychloroquine. Z-Stack's been scientifically formulated. It's kosher and GMP certified. It's produced right here in the USA. I love this stuff. You don't have to take a handful of, uh, of, of uh, pills. Chris has been doing the same thing. Now you just now you got one supplement. It's got everything in it. Uh, so take control of your health and your family's health. Go to Z, that's the letter Z, stacklife.com. Zstacklife.com slash Chad. Enter promo code CHAD, I spell it Chad, to get 5% off your first order. That's zstacklife.com slash Chad. Use promo code Chad, and we'll be right back. The um, Rand Paul came out with a, uh, a new report on the soaring inflation. I know that you're encouraged by that. He says it's only going to get worse. We know that. Um, he talks about the hidden tax. Uh, he, uh, he said 71% of households making under $40,000 annually have indicated economic hardships from rising prices as opposed to just 29%. Of those making $100,000 or more, uh, low- and middle-income families spend a larger portion of their income on high inflation items, gasoline, used cars, food. Um, the families in the lowest income quartile spend nearly 40% of their annual income on these three categories. As a means of comparison, families in the top quartile spend only 10% of their annual income on these categories. 82% uh, of small businesses reported raising prices in the last several months. 42% reported raising prices by 20% or more. You see where I'm going with this. It's like it's garbage. And meanwhile, meanwhile, you're having to deal with, with uh, mandates and all of these other things to try to go get you some kind of blah blah stuck in your body in order to keep your job. And I'm telling you, this whole thing is to keep you weak. The whole thing is to keep you financially weak, keep you financially dependent on the government. Uh, that, that's, again, that's what their whole thing with the $15 minimum wage was. They want to try to keep you in a, in a low starter job. That's what they want to do. They want to incentivize people to do that. The state is after you. They're trying to control you. They want to control your finances, control your mind, control your money. Uh, control the way you think. Again, I told you yesterday on the show, I mean, whether it's the CIA or whatever FBI or whatever alphabet agency out there, they're telegraphing the message on things that they're doing. Uh, Chris, I just saw a show. It's from back in the 90s. It was a pilot episode from a show called The Lone Gunman. And they were talking about uh, flying drones and aircrafts. Uh, they were talking about, and get this, you got to watch the whole episode. I'll send you the link. Okay. Uh, but they're talking about terrorist organizations flying drones and aircrafts into the World Trade Center. No. Yeah. And, they, and here's the thing. They were actually going to crash an airplane into the middle of New York. Uh, and it shows the scene from the airport. They're actually leaving Boston's Logan Airport. Yeah. And, uh, th and the guy says, no, it's our government who's doing this. Because, because the arms race is down. Since the Cold War is down, we're not making money off of arms dealing. So he said there's going to be some, some Middle Eastern shah or king or whatever <laughs> who's going to claim, claim uh, responsibility for the crash, even though they had nothing to do with it, and basically beg to be you know, drone striked and bombed. So that we can get back into the arms race. So, so you know, every time something like that happens, you got some, you know, jihadi dotty that's going to pop up there and say, yeah, that was us. And so the whole television shows about this. And that's prior to 2001, yeah. prior to 9-11. But uh, there's a show out there, Utopia. I'm, not, I'm new to this show, but I found this clip. And I'm like, okay, maybe they're telegraphing some things again. I, I, you know, hey, this is, again, my conspiracy theory thermometer's on high. But I want you guys to judge for yourself. It's a, it's a quick clip. Y'all watch this. People are driven by the need to know what happens next. 
Do you want to know what happens next? Your father created a world changing, not world ending, a world changing, world improving omnivirus. And we have taken that virus and embedded it in the vaccine of the Stearns flu. What? I knew it. <gasps> I knew it. We created a panic and now everybody's begging for the vaccine. No, no, no. D -d Demanding it with all the entitlement of a first world country. Yes. And now we have exactly what we want. Hundreds of millions of Americans lining up, offering us their arms, and letting us give them our creation. I'm pretty sure when every vaccinated person starts dying, they'll trace it back to undetectable virus or not. You've all been very busy. You're all very sharp. Are you sure none of you would like to come and work for me? No? Wait, how's it a cure if you're killing people? I told you it does not kill. That was the amazing epiphany we had. We didn't have to kill to accomplish our goal. <coughs> we intend to stop human reproduction what? for three generations. The busy, endless global assembly line of babies will grind to all. You're sterilizing people? Uh-huh. In the first five years, we'll start to see major birth rate declines as teenagers vaccinated today hit their childbearing years. You're controlling the future of human civilization. Is that what they're calling it? It's a very nice euphemism for a species that is replicated like a contagion across the planet, killing all other species in its wake. <laughs> all right, cut it. This should be on. Ah, I'm telling you, man, I, you, you, this stuff's out there. This stuff's out there. What's interesting, Chad, I've watched that entire show. Yeah. I was hoping there was another season. Spoiler alert, there's no other season. No other um, season. But now that after you sent me that this morning, I'm starting to think I'm like, what other shows do we need to go back to in reference to what's happening today? Right? I mean, we played the deal from The Walking Dead yesterday about the chloroquine. Oh, Dead it, Zone, not Walking Dead. I, that's what I meant. Yeah. It, it's all the same to me. They're all zombies, right? Uh, the Dead Zone. And, and I was watching the live chat during the show. I had to go back and watch the show later. I had an event last night. And I was reading people's comments through there going, you know, hey, I, all I'm saying is just wake up to the potential reality that maybe the message is out there. <laughs> maybe the message is out there because uh, it's awfully creepy. They, they say these things and then you flip it around and it becomes a reality. So anyway, but I mean, what do I know? I'm a wild hillbilly white trash. That's, that's what I heard on social media. Why is this redneck hillbilly trash showing up on my timeline? Because that's where I want to be, baby. Chad Prather unapologetic on Facebook. Follow it. Uh, <laughs> Joy Bayar says that if Republicans are back in power, they will destroy us. Remember what I said earlier, folks, about being the bully. This is what they want to make sure. They want you afraid. They want you afraid. If Republicans or conservatives are to get back, uh, we could look like Hungary and Poland if they return to power. She said it on The View the other day. Uh, she said, I, I read a lot about what's going on in the world. I'm sure Joy Behar is reading a ton on uh, geopolitical situations. Uh, Hungary and Poland, they're doing very badly with the freedom of speech. They are censoring journalists. That will happen here. She says, that's what's going to happen when Republicans are back in power. You can see that they're intractable right now. You cannot reason with these people. They're shameless. They'll destroy us. I sound like it's hyperbole, but I've been around a long time and I see what can happen. Yeah. So, you know, they, uh, that's what you got, folks. You got the Joy Behars and the Whoopi Goldbergs and the Sonny Hostons of the world that are out there making sure that uh, you stay silenced because you're just an insurrectionist, you white trash scum. You, what is it? You're a member of the, uh, uh, good <laughs> God, I've heard QAnon. I've heard the, uh, you know, KKK stuff. Uh, it just, it's just dumb. I'm like, I'm just sitting here reading what you're saying. I mean, Hollywood, I just played you a clip where John Cusack's talking about sterilizing the next three generations of uh of them of the world um and how you just make people line up to get a vaccine i mean look if they were willing listen closely to what i'm about to tell you if they have done this much crap to you in the last two years to steal your freedoms change your speech change your way of living 
co- just completely violated you. Think about what they're going to do in the next decade. I mean, the next decade, because America as a strong constitutional republic that has defended the freedom that, that whatever freedom is out there in the world, people have looked to the shining light of America and now it's gone out. Watch and see what happens. It ain't going to be because of Republicans, Joy. It ain't going to be because of the Republicans. I tell you that much. Hey, you got homeowners insurance for a good reason, because without it, a fire, flood, or burglary could destroy you financially. But there's another major crime for homeowners policy that it uh, that it doesn't. The homeowners policy doesn't cover home title fraud. FBI calls home title fraud one of the fastest growing crimes, and it can ruin you financially, which is why you need home title lock. Title fraud happens when a criminal forges your signature on documents stating you sold your home to them, and he's going to take out loans against your home and leave you with the payments. You're going to spend a fortune in legal fees trying to prove you didn't commit fraud. Home title lock puts a barrier around your home's title. The instant they detect anyone from a cyber thief to a renter to a relative trying to forge their way onto your home's title, they're going to help shut it down. Go to HomeTitleLock.com or register your address to see if you're already a victim. Enter code RADIO. Uh, for your 60-day money-back guarantee. That's code RADIO at HomeTitleLock.com. We'll be right back. Hey guys, welcome back. You know, I am always telling you what to read, and I hope you're reading it. And and get away, don't just read fiction stuff, all right? And not just Glenn Beck either. But uh, this is, I, I look, I, I kiss Glenn's ass enough. I have to be able to tell people the truth, all right? Uh, you can't even get Glenn's book right now. Like, you can't even get it. There's no physical paper to make a book. Uh, it can't get there, so you have to get it on the Kindle. Uh, Jeff Rosenblum is in the studio. He's got the new book out. It's called Exponential. Uh, I am a big fan of your work. I'm a big fan of everything you've written. I'm halfway into my digital copy of this. The book just came out yesterday. Jeff, of course, is the um, he's the founder of Questus Digital Advertising Agency. You've, you've worked with everybody. I mean, name a brand, name a company, name a major corporation out there. You know, from American Express, Apple, Capital One, Disney, you name it, um, all the way down the line. What makes this book important? Yeah, so first of all, thank you for the kind words. I'm also a big fan of yours. Um, What makes it different? Uh, I think two things, which is one, I think we've cracked the code Mm -hmm. on how great brands are built nowadays. And I think too many companies are leaning into obfuscation and duplicity, which are just fancy words. But like brands are full of BS nowadays. Yeah. And what we've realized is brands need to be real and authentic. They need to bring value. But the real mission statement is they need to focus in on empowerment over interruptions. And what that means is brands need to <coughs> improve people's lives one small step at a time. Yeah. And I think the other thing we tried to do that's different is it's really storytelling. The book is not a textbook. It's, it's not dry at all. Like right from the get-go, <laughs> you know, I'm cutting my babysitter's thumb off with a 10-inch steak knife on, on page one. We try right. to make it different. Yeah, when I started reading the book, I was like, "What? Wait, what? <laughs> Appendages are falling off with butcher knives at, at this thing." And when, and this is a book about marketing and advertising. Everybody out there that watches this show, everybody listening to this show, they're selling something. They're they're branded in some way, and and I don't know that people think of themselves that way. But look, we live in a free market society for now. Um, you have the ability to go out and make as much money as you want to make in America for now. Um, it, and there are people out there who think of themselves in terms of their brand and their business. And, and they think, well, I'm not Disney. I'm not Sony. I'm not, you know, uh, these different major corporations. Uh, I'm just the mom and pop shop. I'm the guy out there just trying to make it make a living. Is it possible in this day and age to benefit from the from the principles of this book? What are those principles that make people successful? Yeah, look, 100%. I think mom and pop shops, everyday people on Main Street have a distinct advantage over these giant corporations, Mm -hmm. right? You can just be a lot more nimble. You can lean into interpersonal relationships. You can lean into customer service. I love when mom and pop shops take down the big boys, and they should. And I think all of us that are listening and watching as consumers, we should support those small businesses on Main Street. But here's, here's the big takeaway. Everybody wakes up in the morning wanting one thing. They want to be better 
than they were the day before. Mm. It's the heart of the human experience. It's what drives capitalism. So when brands focus in on empowering people, when they improve people's lives one small step at a time, they're drafting off thousands of years of evolution. So that's the secret code. If you're just running a small business, know your customers and try to improve their lives one small step at a time. You don't have to save the world. It doesn't have to try to be some Patagonia, save the environment. Yeah. Just one-to-one relationship. How can I make your life better? So, you know, when people watch the Super Bowl, obviously, they, they what do they say? They watch it for the commercials, yep. right? And you call advertising in, in different places an interrupter, mm-hmm. right? Um, you you want to get people engaged. You want them participating in, in the marketing brand. You know, we have I have a lifestyle brand. You know, we sell apparel. I want to get – you've inspired me to get people more involved telling their stories along with the message of the apparel, right? And kind of make them a team member so that you grow exponentially. And, and I think that people get caught up in – the Facebook ads or the digital ads or the, or the commercials that they need to go out there and creating these interrupters. Um, how do you bring people along to get them involved with what you're trying to do to grow your business? Create content mm. that's so powerful and so compelling, people go out of their way to participate in it and then share it with others. So I think one of the brands that a lot of your listeners can relate to is, is Yeti, right? Great coolers, great cups. But what they built their brand is they built these incredible aspirational stories, right? Mm-hmm. The, you know, the world's greatest barbecue pit master who happened to be an 89-year-old woman named Tootsie, <laughs> right? And two women in Alaska leading ski adventures and the world's greatest fly fisherman. Like, we're naturally attracted to those stories. So you don't have to buy a Super Bowl ad, which is acceptable advertising during the Super Bowl because we're used to it. Mm -hmm. But every other ad we see when we're watching playoff football, like how many ads are there? We don't want to see those ads, but we do love stories. Stories are at the core of the human existence, right? When you think about the earliest cave paintings, it wasn't just like, you know, here's a woolly mammoth with an X through it. There's multiple frames. Like we share our knowledge through stories. So can we create stories and put it in a place where we don't need to lean on interruptions, which by the way, (laughs) happen to be pretty expensive. Yeah. And we have, we have people who watch this show, listen to this show, and I know that it, their concern is kind of taking back culture, right? They feel like their freedoms have been taken away, their voices have been silenced in a lot of ways. Is it possible for, you know, we talked before we started taping, you know, as a coming from a conservative perspective like I do, you know, you, you kind of feel like the world's out there against you. But I think that's a human condition. Everybody just feels like they're being victimized in some way, shape, or form. Um but but I think that what we got to do is we've got to encourage people to engage culture, get involved with, say, the principles of this book and go back and actually engage this economy in such a way that we are living the American dream. Right. Um, you know, I heard you talking and getting people to tell that story is amazing. I heard you on Glenn yesterday telling the Super 8 story and yeah. talking about how they, they just got in the business of hugs. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's a crazy that's a crazy wild idea that you would think, you know, hey, you know, Super 8's like the Motel 6 sort of kind of. It is the place you go and you kind of get a cheap room, but it's not. I mean, they've, they've revamped everything they've done. Yeah, when you're a human being and you're like, look how great I am, it's, it's pretty off-putting, right? Yeah. So what you really want to do is not say you're great mm-hmm. as a brand. You want to actually be great. So in the Super 8 example, they invest heavily in supporting veterans. And by doing that, it shows the value system that they have. They also have, to be honest with you, really nice hotel rooms for the dollars that they have. Right. I think it's a client of mine, but I think they're, they're nicer than Motel 6. But that's only part of it. Part of what makes them also great is their value system and how pro-American they are and how much they support veterans. So that becomes appealing not just to part of the veteran community, but I think all Americans can agree that's a really important group that we should support. Yeah. So we think to your first point, the real big thing is not just from a business level, but as a consumer level, your actions dictate the success of this country, right? So if you feel, if you lean right, if you lean left, it doesn't matter. Sure. Like, support companies that support your value system, right? Support companies that are, have products that are made in America. Support companies that have strong value systems. Like I recently, it's not a client of ours, I recently met the CEO of American Giant. They make these absolutely incredible sweatshirts and, and sweatpants and they're a premium price. 
So the whole key for these guys is tell this amazing story that you have because it's manufactured in America. They're right. creating jobs in America. They're supporting the value systems and they're helping these talents and they're giving great benefits for people who work here in America. So as a consumer, support those companies. And as a business owner, lean into those types of value systems. Yeah. I want you folks to get this. I want you to read the book. The book is called Exponential. You, actually, you need to go back and read Friction, but uh, you can do that. Get Exponential, I, and uh, this thing is killing it, and I want you guys to read it. The uh, Transform Your Brand by Empowering Instead of Interrupting Jeff Rosenblum. And get the, get the physical copy. Like I, People should buy books, right? You can dog ear. You can mark it up. You can take notes in it, and, and it is. This is a good, easy read. It's a lot Thank of fun. Yeah. yeah, I appreciate that very much. You bet. Jeff Rosenblum, check him out. And I followed you on Twitter this morning, by the way. So, awesome. Thanks anyway, for having me. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> uh, hey, guys, you know what the uh, real secret to effective world-class skin care? I want you to look at my eyes right here. I want you to look. Look how good this looks. This is not just makeup. Uh, I'm telling you, genius cell. The Chamonix, baby. I love it. Uh, you got to get that stuff that absorbs e easily into your skin. Target the wrinkles, the laugh lines, the crow's feet, under the eyes, bags, puffiness, even the sagging jawline. Genius cells, uh, calendula flower base. Try saying that six times real fast, Chris. Formulated by a pharmacist to deliver scientifically researched ingredients to the areas you want most. For me, it tends to be under the eyes because I don't sleep. Well, with Genius Cell's immediate effects, you can see results in 12 hours guaranteed. Genius Cell promises results that you're going to fall in love with each time you look in the mirror, or you'll get 100% of your money back. Now's the time to try Genius Cell and see the life-changing results like millions of others. Go to lovegenuscell.com slash watch Chad. I'll get you over 60% off of Genius Cell's most popular package. And uh, the, uh, the the most popular package includes the Genius Cell Revitalization, Revitalizing Night Repair Cream, free at checkout. That's Love Genius Cell, G E N U C E L dot com slash watch Chad. Love Genius Cell dot com slash watch Chad. We'll be right back. Yeah, Eric Swalwell, um, he said that uh, Republicans will never peacefully concede power again if they prevail in the midterm elections. Um, I mean, these idiots that think that that was some kind of like there was it was a <laughs> it was a peaceful concession this last time. And what, Chad, some glass got broken because people were pissed off. Do you think that all this nonsense, because like right now you send me a bunch of headlines yeah. and most of it is Democrats inciting fear yeah. that Republicans are the boogeyman that were going to send us back to the 1950s, 1940s, 1920s. And see, that's how they're using fear to try to control these midterm elections. Is that because they see the writings in the wall? That they screwed up by having Joe, Kamala, 100%. AOC, the squad all in power. And now you have this governor in Florida that is being the beacon of light and freedom. And people are like, well, I'm going to leave California, New York and the East Coast and the West Coast and move to Texas and Florida. Yeah. But Florida first. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. And, I, and by the way, old DeSantis kind of pissed me off too, saying welcoming people to Florida, saying welcome to the new Texas. Um, How does that make you feel, buddy? It doesn't make me feel good at all. But, but he's not wrong he right? either. Is he right? He's right. Right? Because Texas has dropped the ball. What is going on? In a big way. And big how is it? The big government of Texas has got to stop. And how is it possible that New Hampshire is freer than Texas? We talked about it last year. Yeah, Cato, Cato Institute yeah, Cato came Institute. out with the whole New thing. New Hampshire is more free than the state of Texas. I got on the phone yesterday with an interviewer. And I wound up spending about an hour. It was going to be a 30-minute interview, 20-minute. Turned into an hour and 45 minutes. Uh, because it, it, she said, this was more like a conversation than an interview. And, I, and she goes, I have learned so much from talking to you about what's going on in Texas. I mean, I educated her for an hour and a half on these things. And people have no idea 
uh, and I'll never look away from state policy. I'll never look away from it. I'll never walk away from Texas state politics. I'll never, for the rest of my life, I'm going to be an outspoken fighter for Texas and freedoms in Texas because, let me tell you, we're in trouble. But, yeah, that's exactly what Swalwell and all these guys, they know that Puddinghead and, and knee pads up there in Washington, D.C. aren't doing the job. They're a joke. But their whole deal is, well, they're still better than those insurrectionists that could take us over if we ever give Republicans power again. <laughs> That's the whole deal. We'd rather have a we'd have, rather have a moron in office than uh, than somebody that claims to be a patriot because how dare they? Yeah, because because that's what we do. You know, our our three hundred thirty million guns. We just take it to the streets and just blowing things up nonstop. That's what we do. You know, uh, you I mean, come on. Oh my gosh. Um, let's uh, yeah, let's do a TikTok. Come on, give me one. Uh, let's see. So, um, I find women, men, trans people, non-binary people attractive. So, uh, I am a big old uh, queer, big old queer, big old queer. Sometimes <laughs> I call myself gay. Sometimes I call myself queer. Sometimes I call myself, um, Pansexual, sometimes I call myself bisexual. Um, I don't like to be locked into uh, any single uh, term or phrase. I like to keep, I may. I don't like to be locked into any single term or phrase, but I'm a big old queer. Can we just, I, can, I, we've got to isolate that sound bite for future reference. I'm a big old queer. I'm just a big old queer. Um, like, Papa Smurf is just a big old queer. Uh, I mean, the person's painted themselves blue. It's like a renegade from the Blue Man group that went out there and got caught in Deep Ellum or something. Uh, it, it started, thought they went to a cornhole game and found out it was something completely different. Uh, this is, <laughs> I'm just a big old queer. Uh, I just, now let me ask you a question. Honest, honest, okay. Real, real talk, honest, straightforward, um, free society. Would you leave your child alone with that human being? Like, would you would you let your little boy, your little girl go do playtime? You know, you you got to run, you got to run an errand, you got to go for a job interview, and you're going to be gone for two hours, and you show up, and that's your babysitter. That's your babysitter. Now, come on, don't be a bigot, don't be narrow minded. This person's just a big old queer, right? But but you saw them wearing whatever God knows on their head and painted themselves blue, and. Uh, doesn't want to be isolated with one name. He's just a big old queer and all the different things that he, he can be. I'm assuming that's a he. I mean, I can always tell what their gender is um, biologically, regardless of how many ways you try to identify yourself. But no, you anybody with common sense, and you ain't not leaving your kid with that. You come home and your kid smell like a wiener been rubbed all over him. That's the problem with this. And we're going to sit here and continue to tolerate and normalize this garbage and, and say, oh, that, that's okay. I mean, is that where we're going? Is that where society's going? Looking like Papa Smurf with a, with a uh, My Little Pony on his head. I mean, is that where we're going? That that's what we're supposed to take seriously? Obviously not. Obviously, this is, you know, <laughs> but you want to marginalize a white heterosexual Christian cowboy that, you know, drives a diesel truck and burns up the ozone with the exhaust. Uh, th that, you know, that's, I'm, I'm the problem. I get it. I'm just going to be a big old queer. How about that, Chris? That sounds like a new life for me. I'll be right back. Hey, don't forget to uh, check out Glenn's special tonight on Blaze TV. Uh, he's going to be talking about the Great Reset. You want to spend some time with Glenn. Uh, you can't get the book unless you're getting it on a digital copy, but get it. And uh, also pick up Jeff Rosenblum's book and uh, make sure you're reading that. Increase your business awareness with marketing and advertising the right way. Build your team. Uh, listen, thank you guys for watching. Tomorrow I'm going to talk about how the state's trying to steal your kids. You don't want to miss that for uh, the Thursday night. Find me, watchchad.com, and also prather2022.com. You can now go there and get your yard sign. Go get them uh, and make a donation along the way. Going to be all over the state. Uh, Chris Crossnett, having fun with it. Uh, watchchad.com has the details on the live shows. Leave us a rating and review, and subscribe to Blaze TV at chadnew.com. Love you. God bless you. Bye.